Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video in my Ableton Live 10 Basics series. Today I'm going to show you how to install and use your first plugin. Before we begin, just a quick reminder to leave a like down below and hit that subscribe button. This will help me continue to bring valuable content to awesome viewers like you. The first step to this process is to, of course, download your plugin and then follow the given instructions to install the plugin onto your machine. Some companies have installers for individual plugins and other companies like Waves will have software that is dedicated to installing multiple plugins at once. So we're going to go ahead and I have actually downloaded a plugin that I bought recently and I'm just going to go ahead and open the installer and we're going to work through the steps together. We're going to click next. We're going to accept the license agreement. So during installation, you will be asked where you want to install your plugins. And here we have a couple of options. Option one is to install the plugins in the Ableton recommended default location. This is the option I recommend if you have plenty of space to spare on your main hard drive because the plugins will load faster and overall run better. Option two is to create and use a custom plugin folder. This is a good option if you don't have much space on your main hard drive, but you have plenty of space on a secondary hard drive. Again, I don't really recommend this because your plugins and projects will run slower if they're not on your main hard drive. I actually used a custom folder on my main hard drive for the longest time simply because I didn't understand where Ableton's default install location was. When I upgrade to Ableton 11, I will probably be reorganizing my plugins so that they are all in the default location. Something to keep in mind is that Ableton Live 10 does not actually read 32-bit versions. It only reads 64-bit. Also, make sure you don't confuse VST2 and VST3 with 64-bit or 32-bit. The difference between VST2 and VST3 has to do with the advancement of VST technology. 32-bit and 64-bit are just different types of processing architecture used for handling data on your computer. Older computers commonly use 32-bit software, whereas today's computers mainly use 64-bit. On that note, we're not really going to worry about where the 32-bit version is installed, so we're just going to click Next. So now we are on to installing our 64-bit version, but note that this is VST2, and not all plugins actually come with a VST3 version. So we're just going to make sure that this is leading to this default location. We're going to click Next. We are going to disable any of these that we do not want to use. So we don't need any of the 32-bit versions, and we want the 64-bit VST2 and the 64-bit VST3. We're going to click Next. This is just creating a shortcut for us in the Start Menu folder, so we're going to click Next, click Install, and then click Finish. Now we should be able to open up Ableton Live, click Options, click Preferences, and click Rescan. Now after it's finished rescanning, we want to search for our plugin and make sure it's been installed properly. And here it is. So we've successfully installed our first plugin, but I actually want to talk about a couple more things that have to do with the preferences inside of Ableton Live. So for some reason, if you don't use a VST2 custom folder inside of Ableton Live, then it actually won't show the VST2 plugins. So what I did was I just turned this to on and then I browsed to the recommended default VST2 folder on Ableton's website, clicked rescan, and then all my VST2 plugins showed up. It has this option for VST3 plugin system folders, but for some reason not for VST2. I'm not sure why, but if I wanted my VST2 plugins to show up, then I would have to use a custom folder. You will also want to make sure that this Use VST3 Plugin System Folders is turned to on, so that way Ableton will use this default folder where you have previously installed your VST3 plugins. 
Again, the reason I have a custom folder on for the VST3s is because I simply did not know where the default location was to install those. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to hopefully reorganize these and get everything cleaned up and all in the same folder whenever I install Ableton 11. All right, that should be more than enough to get you guys up and running and installing your own plugins on Ableton Live. Thank you guys again for watching. Have fun using your new plugins, and I hope to see you back for the next video. Take care.